We're back once again with Erica Brown, the publisher and editor of The Cricket, coming to us from her office in Manchester by the Sea. How are you doing, Erica? My beautiful office. That's great. It looks like the sun is rising over your left shoulder. Or the moon. What I don't know. <laughs> the supernova. That's my that's my light. My uh, I should turn it off probably. No, I like it. So it's nice and hot. Nice touch. So, okay, lots of stuff going on on the waterways over there in Manchester. Let's get into this uh, recreational boating fiasco. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call it a fiasco, by the way, but I would call it a intense, a potentially intense issue that is not a new one, uh, even though it seems like it is. And what triggered this is that Bayon Pike, the harbor master of, uh, you know, Manchester's harbor master, who we all love, and um, the police chief, Todd Fitzgerald, both showed up at uh, last week's select board meeting and to talk about something that um, has been a little bit of a perennial issue, and that is Sand Dollar Cove. That was that was what was on the agenda. Sand Dollar Cove. As soon as that was on there, I went, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> yeah. um, and this stemmed from you know he had a lot to say. It probably took a half an hour of pretty um, animated discussion with the board um, about something that had happened on July 23rd. It was a beautiful day, and just for to set the stage, Sand Dollar Cove is off of um, and and La Sand Dollar Cove and Long Beach. Um, are right off of Smith's Point on the inner harbor of Manchester. So it's right across the, it's right across the street, I'm sorry, right across the harbor from Tuck's Point, which people usually know the rotunda and things like that. So the, it's, it's a long, long held sort of cherished area for recreational boaters who are local to Manchester. As a matter of fact, I know people who have been going there for generations, three mm -hmm. generations have been sort of parking there because it's shallow and it's sandy. It's very family friendly. You don't have to go very far and it's utterly stunning. So it's actually part of Smith's Point and Smith's Point is uh, probably Manchester's toniest neighborhood. Dare I say that? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of like wealthy uh, neighborhoods, um, waterfront neighborhoods, but that's certainly one of them. It's one of the oldest. And there's always been a lot of tension between the people who, the fine people of Smith's Point um, and the fact that they abut what by, um, I remember there was a, a hearing three years ago and one of them, a guy by the name of Gary Kanib, he actually was the neighborhood representative for a bunch of public hearings, which I'll tell you about in a second, but he actually said in his quote, I, I, I'll never forget it. He said, we understand that we abut what amounts to a public park. That was literally his quote. He said, we understand that. Um, and it is, you know, it's the public waterways and it's perfectly legal to get together on a Sunday, beautiful Saturday afternoon and have a good time. But there is always been a lot of tension between recreational boaters and um, the folks who have to look at them, I guess. And I, th I think that's not new. Um, <laughs> but on January the 20th, I mean, July the 23rd, did I say January 23rd before? July. You, no, you said July, you said July. Okay, so on July 23rd, there was an annual family party that takes place every year. It's been going on for like five years, but it, there's a long tradition, but there's this one party that is a personal party that takes place every year. For the last three years, the Gloucestafarians have played. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of fun and everyone really loves it. And um, it's very well organized. The organizers reached out, for instance, this year, starting in January to Bayon to say, we're gonna have it at this date. What is the permitting process? Should we contact the Coast Guard? Yes, we should. They, they contacted the Post Gu Coast Guard and they said they were gonna have about 30 boats. And the Coast Guard said, last year you needed a permit this year you don't need a permit well what happened in the meantime is that there was a corporate event for a um a boat retailer like a, a you know a dealer a boat dealer uh and they put in a a, a permit application too and secured one for rough a little more you know like maybe 40 boats i think or and um and they got one in july so they were kind of late to the game well guess what both parties happened at the same time it was a beautiful day it was low tide during the beautiful day. So I see the storm clouds gathering, Erica. Exactly, exactly. That shrunk, <laughs> that shrunk the uh, the um, 
the, the, the space, the footprint of the Inner Harbor. So as a result, there was a lot of boats that were probably going, I saw a drone shot of it at, at its peak and there were 260 boats, but there were 40 boats for the private party and 30 boats for the um, corporate party, or it was the other way around. It was roughly the same of what they planned, but it was just a beautiful day and it was beautiful music and everyone was having a great time. I happen to know, by the way, there were a lot of people at that party that were like, first of all, they all know each other. They're all the same families that go, but this year, member of the board of selectmen, a member of the ZBA was there having a great time, mm -hmm. like right there. Everyone was having a good time. So I guess it overwhelmed the team with the Harbor Master and it was a little bit of a problem. There were some issues with some private, um, you know, somebody went on a private dock, uh, not related to the private party, but somebody else, I don't know who it was. Um, uh, there was also some other reports, you know, noise and nuisance, and there were a lot of calls to town hall. And Bayon Pike went to the Board of Selectmen and he said, we need to deal with this, whether it's a fee for police detail during this for next year with a permit, which I, I, I doubt they'll go that direction because that would be incredibly punitive to people who are very regular. Um, and that would be exactly what the fine folks of Smith Point want. Um, but, you know, it's like a big issue. And, and by the way, I made a reference to the fact that several years ago there were public hearings about this. Guess what? It wasn't about recreational boating. It was about eelgrass. Eelgrass. Suddenly, you know, everyone wanted to protect eelgrass, which is, you know, important to our ecosystem and important for carbon sequestering, of course. But I guarantee not one of the people, like out of the 150 people at those public hearings, which I attended, my guess is... 140 of them had never heard of eelgrass two months before that hearing <laughs> and they were all using that as a you know to say people shouldn't be able to anchor because it threatens the beds of eelgrass and these are very important so it was a big environmental discussion well Bayon pike you know he successfully hosted three public meetings at the time and really let everybody communicate and get out, you know, get out what they wanted. And then he came up with a compromise. It was amazing. He said he extended the no wake zone. And then he also got special moorings that were kind of safe for eelgrass. And then, and, and that's how he solved the problem. Um, so now this issue has come back, but through a different direction and the board of, and now it's with the board of selectmen they're going to try to make up a plan before the end of the year but it's really my hope that everyone sits down and talks about it mm -hmm. because um literally when i tell you that these people are all local they're known you know i'm not talking about the corporate you know event but you know this has been going on for a long time and everyone understands how to play the game and and so it it, it was unfortunate but We'll see how it all plays out. I mean, I think it's familiar. It happens like around Cape Ann. There's a lot of other, it happens in Ipswich. It happens in Marblehead, yeah. um, you know, so. Yeah, and especially once COVID hit too, where everyone and their mom got a boat. They're all over the place. So they may, it could be a boater from out of the area who sees a gathering like, oh, I can string up or tie off over there. And then they just think it's all public dockage or whatever it is. Like it's, so things can slip through the cracks quickly. So I mean, but it sounds like that, that should be something that should sort itself out. I hope so. I hope so. And it's funny, I did research on this. Did you know that over um, in the last year, since 2020, so maybe the last two years, um, sales of boats and marine related products went up 13% nationally? I it's believe it. Attributed to COVID. Yeah, yeah, that's a big leap. It's a boats big... and pets. That's yeah. who benefited from COVID. That's, right. <laughs> that's yeah. exactly right. And I used to, I mean, personally, I have personal experience with this because I lived for 21 years on a cove that became like, overnight you know you it became the cove it was kettle cove and on, on black beach and suddenly and at seven in the morning suddenly you have a hundred boats a hundred boats in front of you and i i lived there with my husband for 21 years never once did i call the police never once you know why because i'm not traumatized by the sounds and the sights of people actually having fun <laughs> you know like i you just i just realized you know what it's the the, the water is public and it's not that many days of the year. How many beautiful Saturdays are there? Right. The and you're right. And this is an issue throughout the area, whether it's the rivers or the beaches. Yeah, it's all over the place. So, and yeah. I know it's not just about the sights and sounds of people having fun. Like, I completely understand that. Right. I, I right. like to be provocative that way. But the truth is, I, you know, and I understand there's the environmental issues and there's public safety. And I know it's all very, very important. Um, and you have to find a mid ground. So, you know, they're going to have to do it and i hope they do that's i guess my point 
Thank you. Well said. Okay. Well, uh, another fun uh, thing that happened in Manchester was the fishing tournament. Was that okay? Can I ask you? Was that fun? Would you characterize the conversation? The party was fun up until a point, right? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, yes. Glossopharians. I can hear them now. Okay. <laughs> the Glossopharians. Yes. Um, but anyway, yes, we had the um, the third annual Manchester fishing tournament. Although what I love about it is that um, you know the families that the two there's two young families that brought this back because there was for about 15 years a Manchester fishing tournament every year a striped bass fishing tournament starting in the late 90s and it sort of just died out. They brought it back three years ago and it's grown every year and it was really fantastic this year. The difference is this kind of this version of, of the Manchester fishing tournament, um, which happened last weekend, is really emphasizes kids a lot. So there's a lot of junior competition. It also emphasizes um, sort of total um, inches caught, which I, I know is becoming a thing with fishing tournaments as well, so that you don't just keep, you know, you only keep one fish. Um, and so you can you can get a, an award for having you know catching multiple fish, and then also um, having different types of fish that you caught. So they have awards for all sorts of things that really try to engage, especially young people with the environment, with species and nature, and all that other stuff. But it was such a beautiful day, and they had a really great time, and they caught some fantastic fish. So I think that those guys are just doing a great job. So. Awesome. Great Good stuff on. as always, Erica. That's a fun one. And great pictures in this week's cricket too. So check it out if you can. I have my copy. Do you folks? <laughs> All right, Erica, same time next week. What do you say? You got it, honey. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.